Hello, welcome to Switched On Gaming, Paul speaking, and today we're taking a look at Dice Legacy, which comes to the PC and Nintendo Switch today, the 9th of September. We're going to start with some PC gameplay, just so I um, can explain the gameplay a little bit better, because you've got a mouse point on the screen here, and then we'll switch over about halfway through to the Nintendo Switch version, show you how that performs, um, certainly in terms of graphical and performance, and also how it performs with a controller versus a mouse and keyboard. You'll see when we play through the PC version here uh, how important a mouse and keyboard is. Can the Switch replicate that? We'll find out a little bit later. So this is a uh, world builder or city builder game that you uh, play in this fantasy world but you use dice as your workers. It's kind of like a mix between a roguelite and a board game uh, using dice. It's really cool if you're a fan of board games, uh, especially dice rolling games you're gonna love this the developer actually cites pandemic as uh, one of his favorite games so we're gonna get into this here we're not gonna play uh, have the tutorial on. played about six hours of this over the weekend absolutely love it um, it's just an, a brilliant game just in terms of presentation gameplay it's just oh honestly it's uh, oh, this is one of my most anticipated games of this year when I knew it was coming out and it is absolutely delivered in spades so, first scenario here, and there are various scenarios to unlock. Uh, this one is called Stranded. You wash up on a shore and basically have to survive um, with the, the limited number of peasants that you've got on board your ship. You have to start gathering resources, start building up your village, and then start exploring. You'll see there this world. It's played on this like, weird sort of hula hoop uh, world that sort of scrolls around, and most of it's covered in fog at the moment. And then as you expand your territory, the the fog will clear and, you know, you can discover more of the world. You can see down the left-hand side, uh, down the right-hand side, sorry, you've got this uh, scroll bar here. This is at the moment how far we can go in the world up to this point here. If we scroll up and down, uh, we can't go any further than that. So you see we've got all of this, the rest of this world to explore. Now, you'll see when we switch to the Nintendo Switch version, the UI is uh, very different on both. And I'll explain a little bit why when we get to that. But for now, let's just play through the gameplay. So, this is your main screen. This is your current ruler. We're playing as the king at the moment, the Stranded King. Over here is the season. So, actually, I'm just going to pause the game while we go through this because the time does keep ticking on. Uh, this is your season counter. So, this will slowly move around. We're coming out of uh, winter here into the yellow of summer. And then... Uh, it's a little bit like Frostpunk, I would say if you play Frostpunk it takes a little bit of inspiration from that because when winter comes around a lot of things shut down, you need a generator to uh, make heat to help protect your citizens. Um, you don't. It, it's not vital if you don't have it, but if you do have it then you get certain benefits and bonuses, so a little bit like Frostpunk in terms of that. So it's a very season based. Uh, here is your uh, special ability so if you roll that combination of dice that you see there the combination to activate you will activate this special ability and the king's ability here is to unfreeze any frozen dice in the winter so it's really handy to try and aim for that combination and we'll look at rolling dice in a second uh, this is your tech tree so as you uh, get um, tech points here knowledge points you will uh, be able to spend them on this tech tree for gathering Production, civic, manipulation, military, economic, and religion. And they will do different things. These starting layers here will start at one knowledge to unlock these. And to unlock the extra tiers, you need to uh, gather the requested amount of resources. So to unlock level two abilities, you'll need 12 wood, six stone, six iron. Once you've got that, you will unlock this next tech tree tier. It works really well. And just, I mean, I'm going to probably be saying this a lot and you'll probably get sick of hearing it, but just so well thought out. All of these little things, just so well, uh, so so really well done. Um, over here, we've got the uh, maximum uh, number of dice you can have. You can have 12 dice at any time. At the moment, we start with five. That's the starting ability of the king. Um, if you get any more than 12 and produce any more, you have to discard some. These are your different classes of dice. We start with peasants. These are like the orangey yellow color. Uh, these are like your main workhorses. But as you go along, as you build the buildings, you'll be able to generate citizens, merchants, monks, and soldiers. They all do different things. Basically, what it means is A, they're different color dice, um, but also they all have a different number of faces on. So, for example, the soldier dice will have more 
sword faces than say for example uh, building faces I'm just going to see if we can click in actually and see those I think it's actually this here it's weird because the switch and the um, PC UI are quite different so the things that are on the switch UI that I've been playing over the last day or two are different on the PC but uh, it, this is where we can see the die faces here so the peasants have kind of this um, working die the first one there on the left sort of the cogs they've got two sort of um, production abilities the axe and the pickaxe a building face a sword face and an exploring face so that's what the peasant die has a bit of everything but as I say for example if you looked at the die faces for the military it was uh, I think it's three or four swords uh, a work face and a build face something like that so that's the die face explained here's the resources that we've got so we've got food wood stone uh, gold iron wheat owl or beer and herbs you collect those by sending your dyes out to these spots on what effectively is a board but the world so the die faces have to match uh, what we've got here and the higher the number on the die, the more productive the um, action will be uh, this number underneath the 16 is how basically how many times you can roll that die before it perishes it kind of acts as the aging of the peasants so it, at the moment at the start of the game here we can roll these 16 times it's plenty of times you can negate that by building these cookhouses when this is built you can send a die to the cookhouse with some food and it will recover uh, its durability basically so as I say what we need to do is put the die out onto these spots these are randomized each game you always start with a cookhouse but the rest of them are randomized and we're just gonna drop these out into the board so here we've got the hunting grounds here so if we put a die here with the production face it's gonna gather food so we'll take one of our die drag it over oh, actually just pick them all up then we'll want. and just drop it out and we'll start a count down here so it's gonna take 40 seconds uh, for this action to take place and then we will get some food you can see the big red number uh, to the right hand side there and the little window that explains what this space is we can see the 23 there that means you can use that space 23 more times and then it will sort of perish and again that sort of acts as sort of wear and tear um, so you can't just infinitely go to a space which is really cool so we want to build this cookhouse you can see here at the moment it's not built we've got the hammer symbol which uh, tells us we need to build it but also you can see it's got scaffolding around it so next thing we need to do is get that being built on the PC you can hold down uh, shift and it will automatically put a die there that's most suitable so we're going back to the hunting grounds again and let that work away the one other thing we didn't touch on up here is the time bar uh, we've got a pause function which is only available on the two easiest difficulty levels uh, on the two harder difficulty levels you cannot pause the game and uh, which makes at the start pretty relaxed as the game goes on and you've got loads of things going on and people attacking you makes it pretty frantic if you can't pause the game to just have a little bit of a think and a look around but uh, at the moment we're on the second easiest difficulty so we've got the freeze available we've got normal speed and then we can fast forward through the game finally we've got this lovely encyclopedia which tells you all about how to play the game what certain things do there's plenty of information and this slowly unlocks as you start first start the game little minor quibble at the start of the game and I've uh, fed this back to the developers but I think the onboarding process like the tutorial when you first start the game could be a little bit more detailed uh, to sort of help show you what you need to do you can enable a tutorial which will pop up uh, hints up here so it'd be like uh, you know build a house build a farm that kind of thing which does kind of guide you through the game it doesn't tell you how um, but that's fine so we've got we're gonna go and gather some wood from the forest Get that working away now you see here when the die come back to your uh space here they are grayed out they're kind of they're exhausted they can't be used again you can't drag them out you can't do anything with them and you have to roll the dice again we've got this other die here this is the explorer face we've got no exploring that we can do at the moment so basically we need to roll a dice but one of the um sort of key gameplay elements is making sure you do it efficient rolls it's no good to keep rolling a single dice over and over and over because you just you know it's a waste of resources um, you need to wait really till you've got a nice decent pool of dice and then roll them all. I'm just going to wait now for this one to finish. We've got three seconds. That will come back to us exhausted 
and then we can do a nice big roll of all five die and see what we get so we've got another uh sort of working die here we're going to send this out to the food crates that washed up on the shore with our shipwreck see our boat here we're going to uh, start gathering it we can see the cookhouse is built now so you can see here we've got two spaces drop a die in here that's uh, got low durability and a piece of food and after uh, you know, a countdown it will come back so at the start of the game we've got nobody attacking us so these sword die are useless the build die is okay because we're going to be building something in a minute but basically we want to keep putting these worker dies out or these production dies to gather resources and we're going to try it and see what we can build just if I did that too quickly we've got this little build icon down here oh just one more icon sorry this lock icon if you activate that you can lock die and then a bit like you know bit of a cliche but Yahtzee if we if these die are locked when we do a roll these these won't be rolled these will faces will stay the same which is useful if you're uh, when you start getting attacked to sort of lock some sword die so you you've got immediate access to military uh, rather than having to panic and roll die if you haven't got any sword faces so, but we need to build stuff so under the build menu here we've got essential production welfare manipulation military economy and religion different buildings in each some of them are locked and have to be unlocked through certain actions in the game uh, if they're greyed out we can't afford them yet so we can afford this wheat farm which is important to get going uh, we can also build this house let's pause the game we can also build this house when you build a house you can drop any two peasant dice onto it and after you know the production time wait you it will produce a new die mm. so you know you'll get an extra die so we've got up to six die and increasing um the number of peasants in the village increases the happiness there of the peasant class you can see at the moment it's kind of just over halfway full in happiness uh, you get buffs and debuffs when the um, classes are happy so you can see there the effects when pleased they will gather extra resources when they're angry <laughs> buildings may be set on fire so that's not, not ideal you'll also see there at the bottom the happiness log that shows you plus and minuses of, of things that are making the peasants happy or unhappy and that's when you can get a good idea of you know what direction to take later in the game all of these classes have different effects for happiness um, and unhappiness so I say peasants really want to be doing things like making sure you've got enough resources making sure that you've got enough peasants so house is really important to build early on to create new dye as I say, the wheat farm is really important to build as well because you can only um, well a, a standard wheat farm can only produce wheat during the summer and there's multiple steps to produce the wheat as well which I really like you have to first uh, use dye to sow the field um, uh, plow the field sorry and then dye to sow the field and then dye to gather the wheat so it's not a simple process it takes you know a good number of turns to be able to produce wheat and then when you have got wheat to produce you can't eat that you need to then build a meal which and it turns that wheat into food and you can see there the meal is greyed out we need eight wood four stone to be able to build that which we haven't got at the moment so you can see we need to you know kind of by doing that by looking at these buildings and um, deciding what you want to build will kind of guide your direction in the game you can see here we need eight wood four stone so you know we need to send workers out to start gathering that the other thing you need to keep an eye on as well is this uh, season thing here we spoke about at the start. This, you know, we're in summer at the moment. It's nice. We can do lots of work. We can grow wheat and stuff. But once the winter comes around, we're going to need to look after our citizens in terms of getting the heat generator going under welfare here, the steam generator. We need five iron for that. It prevents the dice from freezing while it's running. Now, two things we need. One, we need five iron to build this before winter, ideally. So, you know, we should again be concentrating on the iron mines, sending workers out there. But also, once you've built this, you need a lot of wood to keep it going, you know, to keep it fired. You need three wood to keep it running for two minutes. And each season, I would say, takes hmm, 10 to 15 minutes to run through. So, you know, you can see in that time, three wood every two minutes, you're going to need, you know, 21, 24 pieces of wood to power that all winter. So you get this like start of the game, everything feels very relaxed and then winter hits and that's when the panic sets in. So once you've played the game a few times, you really realise that this early summer stage is vitally important to prepare yourself for winter. So that's what we're going to do. Right, enough chatting, let's get on with it. Let's build a wheat farm. 
so click on the building now. I normally like to put my wheat farm over here for some reason. Kind of a habit now, and I always look over there for it. So we're going to get the wheat farm uh, built over there. We're also going to want to build a house so we can get more diet. So we need six wood for that. And so we do want to build the steam generator, which is five iron. So wood and iron is going to be our concentration. We can't do anything with this for the moment. So we're going to re-roll the diet. And pause first. And re-roll the diet. Oh, this is excellent. We've got lots of production diet. So on the um, PC, press shift, pick up all the diet together. I don't think you can necessarily do this on Switch. Not that I've been able to see. But you can see here we dropped the diet in the iron mine. 23 times we can use that. It's going to take a minute. About 40 seconds for these to gather some wood. They're running away. Now we've also got these limited uh, resources on the shore here that we spoke about earlier that have washed up on the shore from the beach, uh, from the boat. This one here has got uh, food. This one has wood. And this one has food as well. But we want the wood early doors. Oh, and lock. Take that off the lock. I'm going to use that to gather some wood. This die here is no good, but we're getting our exhausted dyes back from the forest building. We can see here now the farm needs two workers to plow. So we're going to keep them on that as well. Um, but yeah, that's our focus for the minute is wood and iron. We can speed up this gathering here. We want to really, as I say, get an efficient roll. So we're going to try and get all our dye back here. We're going to roll again. That's not so good. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. And we don't need that. So not very good. So we're going to re-roll those. Another couple of workers here. We're going to send one out to the iron mines. Might as well keep the other one going there. How are we doing? Eight food, seven wood, two stone, only one iron. So I think we've only got one iron mine. Stone mine is outside our territory at the moment. That's a stone mine. That's a production. So we've only got one iron mine. Oh, that's a good roll for us. So, we can get another one going out there. Mm. We'll gather some food just while we can. So we've got no diet at the moment, so let's speed up. There is an option in the game to uh, to halt the game on an activity. So if, if a event comes up or we get attacked, this, this will stop and go back to normal speed. So we've got four of the die back and that last one back there. So we've got no die we can use. Let's re-roll. So this is good. We've got two worker dies. We can stick them in the field to start them ploughing the wheat field. We've got one more worker. We're going to send him back to the iron mines. You can see the durability going down now. So they've gone from 16 to 11 and 10 for these two die. I'm going to re-roll them and that's an excellent result. Stick those in the forest and speed the game up. So at this moment, I you got to make a decision. Do you go for the house, which is six wood? We've got twelve at the moment. Uh, we've got twelve at the moment. We're kind of in middle of summer. We've probably got enough to gather more wood. A house would give us more dye to make more workers. So let's build a house. Let's go for it. Now, the placement of the houses and mainly a lot of the buildings really is quite important because when you put the steam generator in, it only warms like a small area around it. Oh, I think we're going to put the house there. Too late. The house is out. That's okay. We can put the steam generator here. But yeah, the steam generator will only uh, warm up a certain number of hexes around it. So you've got to be careful where you place stuff and not just randomly drop it like I just did. So we've got some hammers. We need two hammers to build the house. We've only got one. We've got three diet here. They can go wood, wood, iron. This explorer one we don't need yet. While we're waiting for those, we're just going to roll out and we get a lucky hammer so that we get the house built. Speed up. At the moment, we're not doing much of our farm, which is a bit disappointing. We need the little cog. We need another two cog dice to sow the field, and even then, we're not going to get any wheat from it. So, stick one of those in there. We can go straight back into the iron mines. We don't need these, let's re-roll. So you can hear, see here, winter is approaching now. Soon our fields will be frozen and venturing into wildlands will be dangerous. We need to make sure we have enough wood to burn and our steam generators, we must survive. Now, 
really, really beautiful. This is the same on the Switch as well, which we'll see shortly, but beautiful. When winter comes, it starts snowing and gradually the uh, the world starts filling up with snow. It just looks really nice. So I don't think we're going to get any wheat before winter really hits, which is not good news. We're going to gather some more wood. We really could be uh, making some more peasants here, but maybe that's a winter activity. So let's take our hammer here that's only got five efficiency stick some food in and this will recover the durability of that die from five up to something a little bit higher oh this is tempting to wait for the other die we'll wait for that one and we'll re-roll those four stick those into the field we might get one harvest before winter comes that's fine we don't need these we've got three die back gonna chuck these swords into there to build a new peasant we don't need the hammer we don't need the explorer oh, see now we're getting inefficient rolls now because we're just rolling and getting nothing we need we're gonna risk one more actually we can't really risk that I'm gonna put him in the cookhouse so we've got the wheat gathered now from over there. So we've got four wheat, so we can use that. When we get a meal, we can turn that into food, which we will attempt to do. How we do with iron, we've got five iron, so we can build the uh, steam generator that will look after our villages. You can see there the hex around the area it covers. I mean, the farms don't work in the winter anyway, so it's not worth covering the farms too much, but this will cover um, the mines the house and one of the forests so that's a pretty good place we're going to need to get that built with two hammers so we're just going to wait a few seconds just to get those workers back and an extra die now so you can see we've got six die out of 12. so we've got a nice big roll there of six we've got a couple of hammers to get the steam generator built we've got a, three workers so they can go to the forest and the iron mine and we don't need this but we're going to re-roll it couple of times see if we get anything useful we do we get that let's try and get some let's try and get some food actually for the winter so hopefully you can see how this game plays out i'm gonna uh, probably jump towards winter and then we'll jump into the switch version and see how that plays so let's fast forward to winter and see how we look then now when the season changes um we get this council uh, effect coming which basically is uh, a buff that you can apply for the next season this lasts the whole next season so uh, these are all random the choice I've got this time is greenhouses so wheat farms wheat farms inside peasant districts work also in winter we'll talk about that in a second uh, solstice celebration immediately obtain two peasant dice which is like an instant effect and the mandatory exercise the peasant dice generated from the house start with full durability so you choose one of these I will go with the peasant worker. Now, let's just pause this again before we get into winter. We're officially in the winter season now, but we're going to, uh, I say, we're going to whiz through this, but I just wanted to stop and show you this. Um, you need to build these things called district tools. And you can build it at the moment. Now, again, if you see where I'm placing this, you can see a white border appear on the land. Now, anything inside that is classed as a peasant district. And the class of die inside that will be giving you benefits and different buildings will give benefits like that. Benefit I just took there said any wheat farms inside the peasant district will still be able to operate in winter, which is really useful. So you can see my wheat farm over here on the left. I want to place my um, district hall somewhere where that will be covered also somewhere where it would get more benefit as well so somewhere like that that covers pretty much the whole of my village at the moment you can see the outline now we've got the wheat farm on the left we've got the house at the bottom we've got one of the forests on the right and the mines and stuff at the top so i think that's a good place to build that i'm gonna need some hammers though to build that I'll get all my dice back to have the best chance of getting some hammers so we'll just fast forward that. And you can see now, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but the snow is starting to fall. There's little flakes of snow. And this is like brilliantly done, this snow effect. I, I, I say I'm going to probably time lapse this and get through winter and uh, then switch to the Switch version, if you excuse the pun. 
but I just wanted to show you how the game transitions into winter, it's just beautiful. Oh, no hammers. There's one hammer. Oh, come on, typical. This is like typical of the game and probably most dice games is that when you want a certain role, you don't get it. But there you go. So we've got our district hall building. I'm going to say whiz through the winter, time lapse that, and then uh, come back and show you the Switch version. Just want to dive back in here and show you how the dice are frozen so i can't do anything with these i can't place them i can't roll them uh, they get frozen because they're working outside of the environment of this steam generator so the steam generator is now running and you might just be able to make out the white outline of the uh, area that that affects but there are some dice that are outside that area and they got frozen so they will stay in a frozen state until uh, summer or until I can activate the King's special ability which if you remember unfreezes the dice if you can roll that combination of dice also you can build uh, like a, an owl house and use beer to unfreeze the dice as well but at the moment I've got none of those things so they will stay frozen another quick interjection now we've built the district hall you can see here our boundary has been expounded this fence up here is our boundary we've now expanded it out so we've uncovered more areas these are now unknown encampments and you can place explorer dice on these to explore them and get a random uh, event either good or bad you'll also find uh, other encampments as well that you can attack or you can trade with so building a district hall is really the key to expanding the land you can see here on the right hand side our arrow now goes further up that track than it did before because we're uncovering more of this giant ring world. So I just wanted to show you that. And there you go, you can see the snow starting to melt towards the end of summer there and you get the uh, next phase, the next season. So it uh, just informs you that winter is gone weather's getting warm again we've made it for our first winter and it's time to move forward and discover what lies ahead we get access back to the wheat farm we get all our diet frozen die unlocked we get another choice at the council so any uh, council policy with this wax seal is a rare policy so uh, make note of those when they pop up because they could really be worth taking so this one doubles the amount of food produced in all buildings inside the peasant district uh, take actually. and there we go so that is the basis of the game I'm gonna um, switch over now to the Nintendo switch version so you can see how that runs and performs uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised but let's have a look and uh, just have a quick talk through that and here we go see the Nintendo switch version I'm um, just gonna talk through some of the UI because the UI has changed on the Nintendo switch version which I think is a really good you know shows a really good degree of of polish and understanding you know to change the UI rather than just doing a straight port from the PC really well thought out so uh, top left hand corner we've got the time bar now over there that's controlled by up and down on the d-pad top middle we've got the resources and over on the right hand side we've got the um, objectives which uh, I had turned off the tutorial turned off on the PC version but that's where the tutorial uh, steps are to help you walk through the game bottom left hand corner now instead of top left hand corner is your character the king uh, minus button brings up his policies x button brings up the build menu and then cross to the middle there the dice are still there so we've got l button to roll them r button to lock them and uh you can see the dice are a lot bigger in size as well the whole ui is really good the text size is absolutely perfect got no problems with the text size again really thought out great amount of care taken uh, we also missed on the left hand side here as well we've got the um different classes so we've got at the moment we've got peasant dice the orange ones and you can see we've got a new class of dice in the this version of the game i am got saved here the blue military dice now you w look through your dice with the right stick now i will say that you know this game is better suited to playing with a mouse and keyboard i think i said that at the start uh, i think they've done a good a job as they can with the controller because there's a lot of you know a lot of controls and it's quite complex and i think it's really well thought out but uh, if you're just getting the Switch version, you'll probably get used to it pretty quickly. If, like me, you're switching between the PC and Switch version, it's kind of a bit of a brain melt to, to get your head wrapped around 
running two versions of the game, so I'll probably pick one and stick with it. But uh, as I say, controls are well thought out. So we're going to press up on the D-pad to start playing this one. Use the ZR ZL to rotate around the world. And you can see it looks really nice. I know we're kind of back in the snow realms again that we left behind on the PC version. But there you go. We've got um, this cursor. Use the left stick to move this over areas. And so you would, for example, here, if I want to put a die in the cookhouse here, nice clean view, I'd move my cursor over the cookhouse. Then use the right stick to select the die I want to use. Press the A button. And it goes into quick house. You can also press the just hover over an area. Uh, let's see if we can find one that needs a die. Let's re roll actually. And get a worker die. So you can just go over an area and press Y and it will just pick the most relevant die to use there. Now you may still want to do it manually because sometimes it does pick ones that maybe are close to exhaustion, right you know, rather than ones that have got a lot of durability. So probably best to stick to um, manually placing the die so there you go that's the switch version I'm not going to spend too long here because we you know this is getting to be quite a lengthy video we've been for a lot of it I've just uh, played about two hours of the switch version about six hours of the PC version and I think the switch version hands up uh, holds up admirably uh, I've not explored too far in the switch version yet this is my second game of it and I haven't been too far beyond this sort of area but I mean the performance has kept up there's been no slowdown or anything like that but I can't attest for uh, if there's any slowdown as the game builds up and you know you get the full ring but you know so far so good really as I say controls are good there is a patch coming day one as well the encyclopedia is missing at the moment from the switch version so that's coming in a patch and uh, some performance tweaks as well but I say not that it really needs them I think it, it runs really well so there you go. That is Dice Legacy. A real sort of uh, in-depth look at that. If you've got any questions, though, that uh, I didn't answer, leave them below and I will be glad to answer them. As I say, this is a roguelike. So, you know, when you do lose, and you lose in a variety of ways by losing um, your town hall, for example, if the enemy can get through all your defences and get to the town hall and destroy this. If your peasants revolt and riot and you don't quell that in time, that's another way you can lose the game. Uh, when you do lose the game, you can uh, sometimes, if you ascend your dice by using a certain building, you can use them in future games. So when you start a new game, you can swap out some of your peasant dice for more powerful dice. And that's really the only uh, progression in the game, which may be a slight complaint. I, I do wish, and again, I put this to the developer, I do wish that there was a little bit more in the way of um, sort of progression uh, when you finish your game either you get you know xp or you get a score or just something just to um you know give the player that little dopamine kick at the end just to say you know well done this is how you how you performed this is a little reward that would be one of my only niggles but you know these are minor quibbles i think this is an absolutely fantastic game if you like board games especially you must check this out honestly you will absolutely love it so much to do the presentation spot on the graphics the music everything is excellent you know really really big big props to the to the developers done a great job and it's a, a game i absolutely love so well done to those guys check this one out leave me a comment below and like the video if uh, if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new really appreciate it but until next time i will see you all again soon thanks for watching and bye bye